Thank you and welcome. Thank you for joining us today. And today we've got Dr. Mithlacha. He is from the Hope Fertility Clinic. Um, thank you very much, Doctor, for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's and, a pleasure. Uh, good afternoon to the listeners and viewers. Thank you. Um, so it's the second time we're doing a talk and I remember the first time it was such a great talk. So I'm so glad we have you back. And um, today we're talking about diabetes and fertility. Um, this is quite a, a big topic because there are so many people that are actually affected and more so these days. Um, and so we're going to get quickly into our first question is, um, but be before we start, sorry, can I ask you to please just introduce yourself, where you're from, what it is that you do? Oh, okay. No, I'm Dr. Mathaga. I'm a fertility specialist. I work at the NetCare Malvatten Hospital and Hope Clinic. Uh, and what we really do is all that's got to do with endocrine, fertility, people who are struggling to conceive, uh, we help them there. And we, we also do a lot of endometriosis, yes. uh, medical and surgical treatment of that. Okay, thank you very much, doctor. I do remember you guys are very much into when it comes to endometriosis and assisting yeah. women, so thank you. Um, there is our first question. Like I said, we're talking about diabetes and fertility. And then the first question is, how does diabetes specifically affect male and, and female fertility differently? Yeah. So diabetes, like you said, is a very big and vast topic. Yeah. And we're seeing it more and more these days. And we've got to appreciate that it's a spectrum. Mm. So you start off being a, what we call euglycemic, normal metabolism of sugar, and then it becomes abnormal. Uh, to a certain degree, it gets worse and worse, and then you become diabetic. So somewhere mm -hmm. in between, you've got what we call a glucose intoler intolerance. So it's, it's, it's always nice to appreciate all those stages before you become a full-blown diabetic. Yes. <clears throat> and what it really does is uh, it gives us an indication about the whole system in the body, for the male and female. So when, when the sugar metabolism or diabetes goes wrong, all the other systems are affected, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. It's unlike other diseases which target a specific system or a specific organ. This yeah. one targets everything in the body. And then we start seeing problems in the endocrine and in the reproductive organs. Mm. And that's how it affects uh, women and, and uh, gentlemen in terms of, of fertility. And overall, we see a decreased uh, level of fertility and poorer outcomes with patients yeah. who've got that, especially when not... Uh, tightly controlled yes okay thank you very much doctor our next question is what are the primary physiological changes caused by diabetes that impact reproductive health okay so it goes back to the this, the first description yes. what normally happens is that diabetes doesn't come alone mm. it comes with all the other metabolic problems that we see your high blood pressure, your cholesterol, your obesity, all the other bad stuff that we, we, we normally run away from. So when someone has got diabetes, it's not what the sugar or the high sugar level does per se, but yeah. it's also what the other factors do. For example, in the male uh, person, I'll give you an example. When you've got diabetes, diabetes and obesity, you, you've got a low, you know, when you look at the sperm, we look at three things, the volume or the concentration, the motility and the morphology. Those yeah. three things have to be at a certain level as a bare minimum for you to conceive naturally and yes. also for us to use in the space of assisted reproductive uh, techniques. Yes. Now, when you've got diabetes, we tend to find that these three key things are lower. To, to various degrees, depending on, on the severity of diabetes. Now, when you add obesity on top of that, and you add cholesterol on top of that, and you add all the other things that come with diabetes, these indices suffer even more. And then the time to pregnancy gets greater and greater, or there is no pregnancy at the end of the day. So yeah. someone who's obese, for example, will have an endocrine problem of converting the testosterone, which you need for sperm production, mm to estrogen and because of the high estrogen in the circulation that tells the pituitary gland 
to stop producing the FSH and the LH which we need for sperm production. Mm -hmm. So that's just one example of, of what would happen. And just mm -hmm. to make it simple, perhaps for, for the listeners and the viewers, when it comes to male uh, fertility or problems, uh, we, we look at four things. There's endocrine impact that we see yeah. with fertilities. So the whole hormone environment changes. And I've just given you an example where the pituitary now suffers and works under and sort of sends weaker signals to the, to the testicles to produce adequate number of sperm. And then you've got the, the, the testis itself, the organ that is affected by chronic diabetes and cholesterol and lifestyle that will ultimately see you being obese. And this testicle loses sensitivity to these hormones and loses production uh, of, of sperm. Yeah. And then you've got what we call tactile problems or sperm transport problems. And that's another story where diabetes doesn't come in. Unless mm -hmm. you've got cholesterol problems and blood circulation problems to the testes, then that can sort of come in there. Then the fourth category in the males is the one where we've excluded the three and we still don't know what is happening, the so-called idiopathic when you don't know. Okay, thank you, doctor. Can you discuss any recent advancements in research linking diabetes management with improved fertility outcomes? What I would say is that uh, research or ongoing treatment always looks at the best way to control sugar. In other words, to, to take the patient who's got diabetes, to bring them back to almost normal control of sugar. So mm. depending what is wrong with the patient, if the issue is the sensitivity of the organs to produce the necessary hormones and control the sugars, we, we give the patient that kind of a treatment. And there's been advances in many of, of, of the, the angles, uh, if, if you allow me to call it, the angles to sort of combat diabetes. So we've got good uh, sensitizers uh, in the market, then we've got good injectables, there's also the lifestyle and diet problem that comes in. So the yeah. diet has been understood better in the past few years. Uh, and so that has been helping a lot. And now we've got the new um, wonder drug, I suppose, the, the so-called Zempic and the yeah. Sixandas of this world. Uh, and those also help in terms of losing weight, decreasing appetite and better management of diabetes. And all yeah. of that ultimately uh, helps us to find ourselves in a place where now there's good sperm production or there's good uh, egg production and what comes into reproductive medicine. Yeah, th that is definitely one uh, topic we need to discuss, doctor. The Ozempic, yeah. I think it's been, um, everyone's talking about it, so I definitely want to yeah, discuss so that. Yeah, so ultimately we're going to have to talk about it. Yes. Uh, we don't have that much experience on it, but the point is that it's here, it's, it's available and people are already using it. So someone can come in here and say, Dr. Amon, it's a big what do I do? So I, I, we, we definitely have to know everything about mm. that. Okay, thank you. And then um, our second last question is, how do you tailor fertility treatments for patients with diabetes compared to those without? Or is it best to work together with the patient's endocrinologist? So, so it depends how the patient arrives uh, yes. at our door. If the patient arrives with a very good uh, control, what we call tight glucose control, yeah. especially you know in the in the medium term, three months and beyond, then we treat this patient almost as a as a normal patient, yeah. because everything stems from this control. But if there is no tight control, it's better to actually get tight control before you move into anything else, because mm -hmm. with tighter controls we see our outcomes improving. With tighter control, we see people improving in the bedroom. Mm. With tighter control, the quality of life starts changing uh, for the better. So the first and foremost thing that we do when someone is a diabetic is to look at the control. And mm. there's, a, there's, a, there's something that we do called HbA1c, which gives us an idea of the control in the past three months or so. And if that's good and below 6% or so, uh, then we know that this patient has been well controlled. Yes. And therefore, we can sort of treat them as a normal patient. But if the control is on and off or even bad, then yeah. we've got to start there and control the sugar. Now, the control will come in terms of diet, exercise, what we call the lifestyle changes, and then medical treatment, medical being tablets, and then lastly, the injectables. 
So that's how we control it medically or you know in a, in a comprehensive way. And in all of these four things that I've mentioned, you need the doctor, you need the dietitian, and you need a lifestyle coach, so to speak. Okay. So if you know, depending how difficult it is, uh, oh. the most difficult case we need everybody on board. But if it's someone who's disciplined and it's not the problem and it's not so bad, then you can get away with just advice, you know. Okay. Thank you, doctor. Our last question for you is, are there any preventative measures that individuals with diabetes can take early on to protect their fertility health? Preventative measures? Uh, I suppose the same principle applies here. Yes. If, if you, you wish to conceive in the future and you know you're a diabetic, the best and the greatest thing you can do for yourself is to keep the diabetes under check. So yeah. if it's back to normal, then you will live like a normal person. You will be treated like a normal person and the body will age uh, like a normal person. So I, I think the, the, the take home message uh, that you can drive to everybody is that good uh, control of the, of the sugar, sugar levels will give yeah. you a normal life. So yes. then you don't have to take any extra precautions beyond what the normal person would do. Besides yeah. just healthy eating and healthy lifestyle. Yes, and I think it also, the message you need to get across is that if you're doing this before you're actually going for your fertility treatment, it makes your journey easier. Um, yes, even okay. outcomes at every level. Yes. So, I mean, like I said, this thing is big. You, you've got to look at preconception. Yeah. You've got to look at the time when you're seeking to conceive or the time when you're doing, you know, your IVFs, for example. And yeah. You've got to look at the time when you fall pregnant and look at the time when you are pregnant up to delivery and beyond that. Yes, yes, so, yes. So if you take it in those steps, you will see that if you control it, the earlier you control it at preconception level, the yes. less problems you have with all those four steps. And if we find you somewhere, let's say we suddenly diagnose it uh, at the point when we're doing IVF or at the point when we're pregnant, then you sort of miss the other stages and it becomes a little bit more difficult. So, yeah. so the earlier you get onto this bus, the, the more comfortable the ride is. Okay, thank you very much, Doctor. I really appreciate your time today. If you'd like to get hold of Dr. McClacha, he is at um, Hope Fertility Clinic. And where is that again, Doctor? The Hope Fertility Clinic is in Santon. Yes. But if they want to get hold of me in the rooms uh, for consultation, they can easily just phone 11 682 4474 and we will be able to help them take take them in for an appointment. Perfect. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thanks very much and have a great day, everyone. Wonderful. Bye. Watch those sugar, watch those sugar levels. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.